several years ago, we discovered a way to unlock the information from the proteins that are necessary to understand the biology of the tumor. GPS Cancer Proteomics is a group of people who are highly dedicated to do what I think is the critical testing that I need to take care of my patients. We can provide oncologists what they have yearned for. Please tell me what the tumor is saying so that I can treat it based on the biology of the tumor. I have been seeing patients since 1978. I've been practicing as a medical oncologist in the state of Florida since uh, 1986. I have the largest practice in individual practice in the state of Florida. The entire cancer story is built upon the biology. Everything about a tumor, everything about how it behaves, how it grows, is driven by the genomics and the proteomics of that tumor. The molecular biology talks to me. It makes sense. It's everything. So how does my unique cancer biology change the way I get treated? I'm Lisa, by the way. I had lung cancer. Biologists understand that DNA works by making proteins. We understand that drugs bind proteins. In order to understand the biology, we must understand the actual level of expression of proteins, and this is where proteomics comes in. Since the proteins are the drug targets, measuring the proteins specifically, directly, and exactly is the final step of collecting all the information about the biology of a, of a cancer. The GPS is important because it can validate what you typically might do, or you may have a surprise, and you may find out that standard drugs are useless in your patient, and you need to use a drug that may be used for that particular malignancy, but is not necessarily used up front. We're measuring the expression level of therapeutically relevant protein biomarkers. Including tubulin beta-3, ERCC1, which are markers of resistance to chemotherapy. We measure HER2 and EGF receptor, which are markers of targeted therapy. 30 proteins simultaneously, which are critical in terms of making treatment decisions for the use of chemotherapy, targeted therapy, and immunotherapy. There is a test called immunohistochemistry. At least from my point of view, it has a very limited applicability, and you're not quantitatively believable. IHC is subjective, and mass spectrometry is quantitative. Mass spectrometry allows us to measure these targets at, at very high sensitivity, at the, the thousands to tens of thousands of molecules per cell, and to do so very quickly so that we can run thousands of samples a month. And this is how they do it. So our specimen testing process starts with receiving formal and fixed paraffin embedded tissue blocks. We match it up with the patient information that we have from the ordering physician. We cut sections from those blocks and our pathologist marks up the tumor areas of interest. There are tumors that are very large, there are tumors that are infiltrating. So our medical director can isolate for us those exact areas that are of importance in the biology of that cancer patient. We use a laser microdissection process, which is fascinating because we are able to isolate a very highly enriched population of tumor cells as opposed to taking all of the tissue. See that area going white? Those are the cancer cells being microdissected. So the only part that's getting analyzed is the part that the oncologist treats. Next, the proteins have to be exposed with an enzyme solution. After the protein is extracted from the tumor cells, an aliquot of the liquid tissue, which contains the protein from those tumor cells, is injected into a mass spec. These mass spectrometers vaporize the sample and generate a precise measurement of every protein biomarker that's being investigated. We're the only lab that's doing clinical proteomics on patient tissue like this, and we're the only lab that's connecting that data to the genomics data. From DNA to RNA to protein, we get a complete picture of what that patient's tumor looks like. We deliver the oncologist a report that includes the level of expression of the proteomic biomarkers in that patient's tumor. I think a lot of doctors choose almost like Betty Crocker medicine. Plug it into my computer and the computer tells me I should give this regimen. Sometimes they're required to do that. Sometimes the insurance company requires you to do that. But where we really are going is treat patients based on what their tumors are telling us. The tumors are talking to us. 
Right now, we're barely scratching the surface of the proteomic universe. We have uh, probably another 50 that will be on our clinical menu by the end of this year. We can build proteomic assays for almost every one of the tens of thousands of protein targets and possibly in the future even measure everything. And I think our goal is to measure everything, to give the clinician all the information about all the genomics and all the proteomics so that that can help guide therapy going forward. The location of a cancer in terms of where it is located in the body for the most part is irrelevant. It does not matter. What matters is what is driving that cancer to grow. There's one example of a patient of Dr. Mammoth as a lung cancer patient who expressed a high level of the topoisomerase 1 protein, which is treatable with a drug called arenotecan. This is normally not used early on in the treatment of a lung cancer patient, but Dr. Mammoth took our patient results, took our test results, to treat that patient with arenotecan, and that patient has basically had a complete response. That patient is me. And when I got the right drug, in less than three months, I was in complete remission. Now I'm cancer free six months later. The biggest challenge is inertia. And we're challenging the field, we're challenging clinical oncologists to accept the fact that more information is better. I've been doing this for over a year. There's no reason why everybody could not be doing this now. When I'm treating a patient, I feel that I should be doing as best a job for treating that patient as anybody on planet Earth. And if I'm not doing that, then the patient deserves better. And I think that if you're not using contemporary molecular data to treat your patients, then I don't think you're fulfilling that mission. For so long, it was impossible and people accepted that it was impossible, that we could never measure exactly the level of these proteins that are so important to defining the response or the non-response to these cancer drugs. Now it's possible. And what we need to do is to continue to educate oncologists that it is possible so that we can continue to help more and more people.